Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nermodon, and I'll be doing my next installment of my Let's Talk About Me series. This is a video series where I have the opportunity and the privilege to tell you guys about key moments within my life and I hope you enjoy. In this particular episode, I will be talking about my first true love and or emotional connection that I had with obviously a female. And with that in mind guys, let's begin. So, obviously this story is going to be very prolonged and I'm going to have to skip over quite a bit of detail in years just because there's not enough time in the final result of the commentary. But I promise you guys, I was the insane person in this circumstance. I was the person that was following this person around and I wanted to strive for their heart. You know, I tried to do everything I could to make this work. And maybe that's not a bad thing to uphold, but in this circumstance it lasted too long and I should have cut my losses, you know, a long time ago. And to begin things off, this started approximately in first grade because, uh, you know, at the same expense, I did have another idea of somebody else in mind. But, you know, I never really focused on that person. It was all about this one person. I will be using first names in this just because, I mean, there's so many people and these names are very common. So it's not a big deal. Anybody that knows me in real life already knows the story. So nothing too crazy there. But the girl I chased for the longest time was Cassie. And her friend or somebody that was acknowledged in my back of my mind was Carrie. And I didn't really follow Carrie too much. I, you know, at first was like, oh, she's super hot, which she was. And both of them are super hot. I guess that's the best way to put it. So I guess that's why you're attracted to the more infamous people. I mean, maybe on an emotional connection or intellectual, they outclassed me by a lot at that time. But even now, I'm pretty sure it would still be the same uh, ratio. Also, the story also is going to have a little competition in it. And that's always fun. That always makes everything so much better because I don't like to lose in most circumstances so if that's an argument and or anything physical or really anything in that matter I do my best with what I have and the guy that you know we fought for the longest time and it's ironic because we would later become pretty good friends I would consider him probably top five in my list and his name's Cole he's actually in training for the military right now so I hope everything's going good for him but with that in mind guys we hated each other so much elementary and middle school years I mean we were constantly still striving for this girl, and it was insane. And just in case you guys didn't follow, we were striving for Cassie. That's what we wanted. We wanted to, you know, we had one heart ready. We wanted to gather the other one. We wanted to complete the ratio. And needless to say the least, he would get a little bit more lucky than me. And, um, you know, in high school, he would get to take her out, and overall he got the kiss. And I don't know. I don't really care as much as you might think. But this lasted for 11 years, and that's a long time. It actually ended at June yeah, junior year, because I just kind of lost interest, and I kind of uh, asked for the reasoning behind it, and I guess that's kind of when I got my answer, that it was never going to happen, and, you know, that's fine, of course, I mean, I'm not terribly destroyed inside, I mean, I'm perfectly fine, but when it comes down to it, the journey and the information that would lead to this was on the hugest scale, I mean, I would do anything I would in middle school, when that appropriate time came, I would walk her home every single day, and I'm not even kidding you guys, I would be there waiting for her to leave the doors and then I would walk her home every day and that's just what I did I mean was it the most intelligent thing now I guess not if I could go back I tell myself that it wasn't going to work but it was still a good way to connect I mean you gotta realize I focused all my effort on this person because you know I didn't really care about everything else I focused mainly all my efforts on trying to please her which you know that's a good thing I guess if you're in a committed relationship you know you always want to please your other partner but and a friendship that really doesn't do a whole lot. It just kind of uh, becomes an annoyance, and I can imagine how. With that in mind, guys, yeah, I would do that every day in middle school. I'd walk her home, and there was never really any complications, of course. I would try to sneak in there like, oh, hey, you want to go out or something like that? You know, I'd try to push it into the argument and then try to almost, in a sense, use some kind of uh, way to make her say yes. But it never worked. She shut it down multiple times. And with that in mind, guys, it just never existed. It was never a complete thing. Now, how does this relate to me and Cole? Well, me and Cole both liked her, and I told this before, and I told you guys in a more detailed way. I mean, we hated each other, but you got to realize, like, you would give the guy the glance, and you would always try to get next to her. You wanted to be within that friend's, or not friend zone, I'm sorry, that friend group, you know, like that group of people. You know, friend zoning, nah, that's a different argument for another day. But when it comes down to it, you know, you would try to get there and you'd look for the guy and you're like, where are you at, Cole? I'm going to look at you and be like, hey, I'm next to her and you're not. You know, you try to give that notion of, hey, I'm getting lucky while you're playing with a bunch of guys rolling around on the ground or something like that. Perfectly fine if that's your cup of tea. But when it comes down to it, you know, it never worked out. And in either circumstance, you know, the events that would last, I would spend so much money to try to appease her. Because if you can't win her heart by 
I don't know, any other formula that you've been doing, you know, money is a usually pretty good thing. Now, I know people will say you can't win happiness with money. That's debatable. I mean, if you're willing to spend enough, uh, I think over time. What would happen is when high school hit, I would go a little bit overboard. I would have bought her, if I'm correct, I want to say this is sophomore year, but I might be wrong. I bought her an iPad, and it was good. I didn't have any problem with that. I mean, financially, I was perfectly stable at that point. And an iPad, like, you know, 400, 500 bucks, that's not really that bad. I've spent more on other people. But with that in mind, you know, I would try to buy little prizes, you know, little things. I would deliver like snacks to her all the time. And I would try to buy her like crystal necklaces. I remember doing that at the end of middle school and stuff like that because I wanted to show that I was really there. I wanted to show my dedication. But in a sense, it almost became more creepy than it was meant to be. And of course, from your perception, everything you do is in the grayness of your heart. But to somebody else, you know, it can go a little overboard. And I could see how. I mean, it was pretty creepy. And when it came down to it, you know, there were times where we wouldn't talk and eventually it would re-centralize. But overall, guys, I guess that's my story. You know, I would become the crazy boyfriend, I guess you could say, or crazy guy that was trying to, I guess, attract that centralized position. And you know, I guess if I could go back, would I change anything? I don't know. It was a lot of fun. I think it really strengthened the ra the friendship, but it's hard to say, you know, everything you do and from somebody else's perception is completely different than how you view it. So I don't know. I mean, how are we now? Is everything going good? And what's the final result? No, we are far from a relationship, if that makes any complete sense. I mean, we hang out occasionally, but, you know, I try to keep my bounds now. I try to stay, you know, let a couple of weeks go by and then send a text like, hey, and then have a couple of conversations, wait a couple more weeks. You know, I try to lay it off. Now, maybe that's just kind of not the way to approach it, but, you know, everything's a lot better now, and I think I'm a little bit more sane now. I mean, I would hope so, especially from that standpoint. There is some uh, complications that can come with being overly attached to somebody and feeling like you have to be there at all times. But I don't feel that way anymore, and I guess that's a good way. But anyway, guys, that was my story. I would love to know if you guys have done anything on that magnitude. I don't imagine many of you guys have done it for 11 years. But um, if you have been doing it for a prolonged time and you're stuck in that friend zone or you're just not getting anywhere, you know, as much as it hurts, I would say uh, cut your losses and move on. But, of course, that's just somebody telling you that over the Internet. But when it comes down to it, guys, I appreciate you guys enjoying the series so much. I look forward to uploading a couple more videos today. And if you guys are willing to share your story, I would be completely interested in listening to it and having you guys explain your journey with me because it can be a very emotional and very interesting one, especially on any magnitude. But anyway, guys, that has been enough for me. I'll see you guys in the next installment. This has been NMO, and I'll be signing out, guys. Peace.